Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. DwyerVIP.com, a free site. Today is Sunday, April the 14th, 2019. Let's talk about Clarissa Shields' victory over Christina Hammond, one that surprised me, quite frankly. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just say I was wrong about this fight. Clarissa Shields is boss. She won the fight, the second half of the fight. Once I realized what was going on was masterful. Let me say physically, Clarissa Shields did things I hadn't seen her do in the past. Double, triple jabs, a lot of head movement. But more importantly, mentally, she had the superior game plan. Let's talk about it, right? Let me just say this. In my favorites folder right now is a clip of her fight against Hannah Gabriels. Right now, I don't follow what the judges say that often. I believe that fight offers a blueprint on how to be successful against Clarissa Shields. Right? You'll notice looking at that tape, and it's important, I just want you to follow along with what I'm saying here. View that tape as a companion tape to this video. Right? In that fight, Clarissa Shields would start to throw, Hannah Gabriels would jump in, <clears throat> would throw combinations, would hit Clarissa Shields. She drops Clarissa Shields early in that fight. Gabriels, by the way, isn't even in the same weight class, right? Gabriels is the champion in a lower weight class. Gabriels would then jump back out. I know the judges had that fight a wide win for Clarissa Shields. I didn't. I considered that fight to be very close. In my favorites folder is also a post-fight interview of Hannah Gabriels. And Gabriels compliments Clarissa Shields on her hand speed. But Gabriels did not buy the judge's decision. Right? Gabriel says, look, I'm going to have to go look at the film. But when I do, I'll be surprised if it's not a beast to draw. Right? That's what Gabriel said. So, right, Gabriel's leverages in that fight a decided foot speed advantage. Just look at the women's feet. Right? Gabriel's also comes in, is throwing combinations. Shields, in my opinion, didn't have the foot speed to close the gap on Gabriel's early in that fight. Nor did Shields, who's the bigger woman in that fight, have the ability to get out of the way of Gabriel's shots. I thought Hammer was going to beat Clarissa Shields, in part for those reasons. Now the first round happens, and the first round went exactly as I thought the rest of the fight would go. Right? Hammer comes out, Hammer is hunting Shields. Right? Hammer actually is more than halfway across the ring. Look at where the fight starts. Hammer comes out, she's so convinced she's going to beat Shields that she goes literally more than halfway across the ring and starts offensively using her jab. She's the lead puncher. Right? Shields comes out, looks slow, looks flat-footed, doesn't do much. Right? Loses that first round by a wide margin. Now let me just say, after that, just I'm going to take you through where my thought process was in real time. I didn't understand what was going on in the second and third rounds. Right? I was watching it and I could not understand as a layperson watching the fight live. I just couldn't understand why Hammer was missing so much with the jab. I just couldn't understand why Hammer was unsuccessful, wasn't dominating the fight, wasn't building on 
a dominant opening round where I thought she established superior foot speed, the superior jab. It wasn't until around round four or round five when the camera goes to Shields' corner and Bernard Hopkins' former corner man, in fact, the guy Bernard Hopkins fought as a pro, John David Jackson is talking to Claressa Shields, right? Now, let me just say this. Claressa Shields is excited. She's an Ali-type personality, right? Style-wise, I think Hammer is much more Ali. But personality-wise, Shields is kind of like Ali. She's excited. She's talking it, right? Older man, John David Jackson, personality-wise, calm at all times, low-key, can sense someone's emotions, can keep them focused. Personality-wise, he's the perfect person for Shields to have in his corner, right? He knows exactly how to get her to let off steam. He asks her some questions. But what's important is during the exchange, and it's on film, Jackson tells Shields, look, you know, you're looking good. Just continue to have her lead. Just continue to have her get off first and then go after her. I'm telling you, as I watched that, I understood what was going on. The second half of the fight is dominant. Understand, while Gabriels is letting Claressa Shields lead, right, and then is using it against her, while Gabriels in that fight is a counter combination puncher. In this fight, Shields is letting the jabber lead. In other words, this isn't Fraser Ali, the first fight. This isn't the shorter fighter, in this case Shields, trying to be the lead puncher, trying to force the action. No, Shields is actually waiting for Hammer to throw the jab. The whole first round is a con. It's a hoax. Shields wants Hammer to come in from the outer pocket, to come into the pocket, to throw the jab, to think that she is alpha. And then Shields is going to counter her and is going to follow her outside the pocket. In my opinion, that's the fight. It's masterful. Let me just say this. So when Hammer comes in and Hammer is throwing a jab and let's not get confused. I know Shields is doubling, tripling up on the jab. Right? But understand Shields wants Hammer to throw the jab first. And understand there's no comparison between the jabs. Hammer's jab is the far superior jab. Quite frankly, Hammer loses this fight because she's completely out thought. Hammer should have stayed on the outer pocket. Hammer should have focused more on her legs, right, than on coming inside and throwing the jab. Hammer, foolishly, is the one who's trying to collapse the pocket. So Shields is throwing a jab. I know on the telecast they say, wow, this is like Ken Norton throwing a jab against Jabber Ali. Right? Shields is throwing the jab, but I'm just telling you the jab is really more of a distraction. Right? Hammer comes in. Shields lets Hammer lead. Then Shields throws a jab, steps forward. The real action are the body shots. Right? What I want people to do is to, if possible, look at the CompuBox after the first six rounds. 
right? Hammer lands some body shots late. I'm telling you, there's one point where Shields has landed something like 20 more body shots than Christina Hammer, right? Hammer, the tall fighter who one would imagine would use length, would be outside, would force Shields to move, would then use superior foot speed to change the angles and a pop a jab. Hammer instead is so close to Shields that Shields is able to land body shots. Right? Let me just say too, that Hammer is so close to Shields that when Shields follows her after Hammer comes in foolishly leading, and this happens round after round, right? When Shields follows her, Hammer, who is vulnerable as she backs away from the pocket after her offense, Hammer has no way to grab Shields. The referee won't allow her to do an Ali move, won't allow her to grab Shields by the back of her head. Right? Hammer can't get low enough and Shields, this is a big part of the fight, Shields makes it difficult for Hammer to clinch her because Shields is moving her hands, right? Shields has above average hand speed. And Shields is moving both hands, making it hard for Hammer to clinch her. So a sequence that should have been more of a Hannah Gabriel sequence. In other words, Hammer should come over, right? Look at Shields, who needs to bridge the gap to make the fight competitive. If necessary, Hammer didn't need to throw anything. In other words, one way to slow down a counterpuncher is by giving them nothing to counter. Right? Hammer already establishes in the first round the superiority of her jab and the superiority of her legs. So Hammer could have played a clock game. Right? Could have come over could have just looked at Shields. Could have said to Shields, hey look, you know, I'm gonna look at you from outside. You're gonna have to try to bridge the gap, then I'm gonna counter you, or I'm gonna scamper away. She could have done that until the last 30 seconds of the round, when she could have then, from the outer pocket, flicked a jab and just used her superior movement. She knows where her legs are gonna take her. Shields does it to try to win the round on the judges' scorecards, right? Or Hammer could have fainted more from the outside. What some jabbers do is they convince you that they're about to throw a jab, right? Flick a shoulder, think Roy Jones, right? Flick a shoulder, not a jab. Then the other person opens up, then the jabber has the counter-punching opportunities. In other words, Hammer, after winning the first round, and hindsight's 100%. Hindsight's 100%. Hammer, after winning the first round, should have tried to stay on the outer pocket and used her jab as a counter. Right? Instead, instead, Hammer's close enough to Shields so Shields can hit her in the ribs. Hammer is close enough to Shields, so Hammer is trying to grab Shields at times, is trying to clinch, there's excessive clinching in the fight. Referee warns Hammer. Hammer easily could have had a point deducted. Shields, worse yet, with above average hand speed, right? Two-handed attack. Someone who likes to go, you know, who throws punches kind of like a mid-range hooker with an excellent counter right hand. Shields is able to get her rhythm. Right? Hammer is so close early in the fight that Shields is able to get the rhythm early in round after round. Right? Hammer should have been the counter puncher. 
not the lead puncher. Right? Shields, Hammer should have forced Shields to have to have collapsed the pocket. Right? In other words, that Ali Joe Fraser fight, the burden's on Joe Fraser to collapse the pocket. Not Ali. Ali can be the counterpuncher. You understand, if Joe Fraser were going to just stand outside and wait for Ali to then dictate the action, Ali shouldn't have been in a rush to establish a pocket, especially when he has the superior legs, right, and can make the pocket a mobile pocket. So Christina Hammer gets battered. There's another fact in this fight that's interesting. Right, Clarissa Shields mentions it in her post-fight interview. She says, in her words, Hammer's jab is off the chain. Right, Hammer has a great jab. But then Shields goes further and says, you know, I think she's really left-handed. Understand, that's significant. That's an old boxing trick, right? Think left-handed Oscar De La Hoya hitting you with a jab that's actually his dominant hand. Think Victor Ortiz, right? I would argue Marvin Hagler, right? You have many fighters who fight inverted. In other words, their dominant hand, Miguel Cotto, their dominant hand is the hand they're hitting you with the jab with. Well, understand how that affected the fight. Clarissa Shields lets Hammer come and then throw her dominant hand. And once her dominant hand is out there, Shields knows she's naked. Shields knows she doesn't have heavy ammunition behind the dominant hand. So once Hammer gets the dominant hand out the way, Shields is countering and attacking the rest of her body. Right, so to sum up, I lost this fight. Right, it's been a rocky year for me. Right, I lost the um, Mikey Garcia, Errol Spence fight. Worse yet, as people who follow the uh, polls I post here online, I had a backup plan here. I had Caleb Truax against Peter Quillen. I was getting a plus 225 there uh, in Truax's division, right? Quillen's moving up in Truax's backyard in Minneapolis, right? And of course, Quillen hasn't had a knockout since something like 2015, and that fight was decided, uh, was called a no contest. So I wasn't even able to hedge my play here. So it was a bad night for me. Right? But more importantly, I got out thought here. In fact, my fighter, Christina Hammer, got out thought here by John David Jackson and Clarissa Shields. Understand, Bernard Hopkins, right again, who John David Jackson was in his corner for a few fights, made a habit his entire career of coming out for the first round and seeing what the other fighter had to offer. In other words, the Bernard Hopkins you saw in the first round wasn't the real Bernard Hopkins. Here, Clarissa Shields comes out flat-footed, passive in the first round, right, loses the first round, suckers Christina Hammer into believing that Hammer could walk her down in the fight. Then, of course, uses Hammer's willingness to lead against her, counters her. She's, Clarissa Shields is not a pot shotter, folks. She's a combination puncher. Right? Combination puncher. Let me also say, too, I want you to look hard at the copy box. A lot of the punches in this fight were thrown with no intention of them landing. Look at the low connect rates for both fighters. Right? I believe Hammer's trying to land punches. I believe Shields, high level stuff, is throwing a counter jab just to move behind the jab. 
to set up hooks. Right? I believe a lot of what Shields is doing is throwing punches just to set up shots to the body. I believe a lot of her combinations are, we'll call them a phantom combination. She throws some shots up top. So Hammer, who's tall, is trying to block the shots up top just so Shields can then rake to the body. Clarissa Shields is a very accurate puncher, but yet the compu box doesn't show that in this fight. Why? Because she's not leading as usual. Right? She's countering. And because I believe she's throwing punches just to get position in the fight. It worked magnificently. She's the top right now. It's her era. She's boss. She beat an excellent fighter. Right, Christina Hammer's going to look at the film of this tape and she's going to realize she's been had. She's going to realize that first round was illusory. She's going to realize that Clarissa Shields decided she was going to counter all night and did so magnificently. I tip my hat to Clarissa Shields. I'd love to see a rematch. I'd love to see a rematch. Right? Great strategies might not be able to be repeated. But Shields pulled it off and I tip my hat. She's undisputed. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.